discuss if you're not able to discuss pay or you won't discuss pay, what is the point of keeping your door open? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nick. And well, there's a range of issues that staff raised with me when I was, for example, talking to staff on Sunday night at the East of England Ambulance Centre. They said actually a bigger factor for them than pay was their frustration around the handover delays that they see at the hospital. And that's why at the autumn statement, we prioritise that. We put the biggest ever uh, increase into social care, an extra 7.5 billion over the next two years to buy 200,000 care packages to address this issue that you and I have chatted about before in terms of the number of patients in hospital who are fit to leave but are stuck there which in turn then creates the pressure on ambulances when they're doing those handover delays so what we're going to do is invest across the system we put the extra money into the NHS the extra 6.6 billion but we in particular targeted the social care with an extra 7.5 billion Uh, and we need to get those patients out of the hospital that are fit to discharge so it's looking at the system as a whole listening to the various concerns that staff raise and actually the number one issue they've raised with me is around that issue of handover delays How is it that on your watch we have the first ambulance strike of this magnitude in 30 years? That's a day of shame for you and your government, isn't it? Well, we're investing more, Nick, in the NHS. That's what uh, we did at the Autumn Statement. It builds on the the long-term plan. Uh, Well, we've got an independent process which the trade unions have chosen not to accept. Secretary of State, the independent pay review body, you only get on it if you or a predecessor recommends you. The chair is appointed by the Prime Minister. When was the last time the Indian Pay Review Body actually recommended above inflation pay rise? When was the last time, Secretary of State? Uh, Well, uh, last year's 3% that was awarded to Agenda for Change was above inflation. Uh, So the award last year was above inflation. But they're they're recommending now, I think, 3% and we're at 10.4%. And are you aware of the background of some of the people who sit on the Uh, Pay Review Board? So, so firstly, uh, I think it's, it's uh, a mischaracterisation in terms of the independence of people on uh, the pay review but bodies. But you only so get there if of, you approve them. There Mr. are Bartley. they are a mix. There's some trade union representation on the trade, uh, the independent pay review bodies. There's academics. There's a range of people, and but, I think it's very unfair to characterise them in that way. But in terms people of people who've done human resources for McCain oven chips, why? Well, why would I think the that's government a, a, look to someone who's been involved in human resources for making chips? to solve this crisis. And you only get the gig if you, or you chair the gig, if the Prime Minister, independent, please. Well, I don't you accept that characterisation. I think there's... to believe that, Mr Barclay. I think there's a, I think that's a mischaracterisation of the process around independence. It's a long-standing process that we've got. It's awarded... And it's landed us uh, in this increases. Mess. Well, it's awarded increases of 4 to 5% uh, in terms of the, the average pay uplift. For those at the lower end of the agenda for pay uh, bans, uh, so we, the, in the hospitals, the porters are actually at 9.2%, and it targeted its funding greater at those on the lower incomes. I doubt if you've been able to speak to Christina McInerney so far this morning because you've been very busy speaking to the media. We have been able to speak with her. And I think it's fair to characterise it, Secretary of State. She's furious with you for the article you have in one of the newspapers. She told me this. Do you know what, Steve? I challenge you to find a single trust where Unison is on strike today that would say to him, we have made it, as he said, almost impossible to make contingency plans. I challenge him to come up with a name. And if he does find one, I will make sure that I deal with it at local level. And he had the capacity, if he thinks that's been going on for weeks, to come back to me or any of the general secretaries of the other unions and say, step in and do something about this. It's an utter disgrace that he's now attacking hard-working ambulance people who've literally spent hours and hours over the past few weeks working with their employers to make sure there's safe practices in place for today. I wonder if you could identify that trust, Secretary of State. Uh, well, I think all of the trust on strike, because I saw Christina yesterday, and what they refused to do was give a national undertaking in terms of the exemptions that applied for all of life-threatening and emergency calls. They were not willing at a national level to give that assurance, which has made contingency planning much more difficult. They've asked, uh, they've decided that all of those things will be done at a local trust level. But there's further uncertainty, Nick, because they then say in terms of some of the Category 2 calls, uh, those will be decided on the day in call centres by their members. And that obviously makes, uh, from a contingency planning perspective, 
perspective, it's extremely difficult. And all of this comes at a time when we've seen over the last week flu admissions to hospital increase by 73%. We've seen COVID admissions increase by 27%. Many of your listeners will have been concerned about strap A. We've got five times the normal level of prescription of antibiotics. We've seen more than a third increase in the number of calls to 111. And we've seen over the course of this month a 15% increase in 999 calls. So the unions have chosen to strike at a point when the health system is under maximum pressure. And then alongside that, they refuse to give a national undertaking in the way, to be fair, that the Royal College of Nursing did do for the strike yesterday. But the GMB, Unison and Unite have refused to do that and have insisted on having local arrangements and including within so, that a lot of fluidity on the day. So you would say that all trusts then have resisted this attempt to produce effective contingency planning? Well, they've insisted, instead of having a national arrangement in the way that the Royal College of Nursing have done, on having arrangements at a local trust level. Part of the reason I asked to see the unions yesterday was to agree escalation measures over the course of the day, because there is such uncertainty over the level of contingency, particularly for some of the CAT 2 calls. And of course, Category 3 calls, which for, for your listeners are those calls that are urgent, they themselves can be very serious calls. Well, particularly if there is a delay and they escalate. So we need to have in place right. the escalation to be able to address those calls. And obviously that is very volatile when you have a series of different arrangements from trust to trust. My understanding, and you're closer to this than I am, Secretary of State, is that um, a mother giving birth at home, if she gets into complications, that is a Category 3. So we have real issues with mums, should they want to give birth at home today, and they encounter problems. Is that correct, Secretary of State? Uh, well, Category 3 calls are not covered by uh, the trade union agreements that I've just referred to. That is right. why many trusts have advised mothers uh, not to have home births. So the advice has been uh, in terms of those mothers not to go ahead with home births and to come into a hospital setting uh, as one of the precautions that is being put in place. But in a way, you, you just played that clip, Nick, from Christina I sort did. of complaining about my comments. And yet your next question highlights exactly my point, which there is an impact on patients patient safety if we're not able to have certainty as to which conditions are covered. And that is one of the difficulties of leaving it on the day to individual decisions by trade union members in the call centres. Although are you in any way guilty, language that I read here, ambulance unions have made a conscious choice to inflict harm on patients. How helpful is language such as that at this time, Mr Barclay? <laughs> Well, I think it reflects the fact that the system is under very significant pressure. We've seen a, a big uptick over the last week in terms of flu, flu admissions, in terms of COVID admissions. Strep A uh, has been uh, a big issue in recent weeks. Many parents concerned. That is being reflected in the pressure on calls to 111 uh, and, and people turning up at A&E. And this is traditionally an extremely busy time for the NHS. And I think uh, the point is that we have been pushing the trade unions to agree that all Category 1, Category 2 calls would be covered so that we could put the contingency measures in place with the army, with volunteers, with the community services, with our frail elderly uh, services in terms of falls. And that obviously is much harder to put in place if we don't have those national agreements as to uh, urgent uh, and uh, life-threatening and emergency calls being covered. Lastly, if we look briefly at the nurses' industrial action, is there a possibility that there could be a one-off payment to get over one of the sticking points there rather than a percentage inbuilt pay rise. Well, the government's position, Nick, has been consistent throughout, which is we're investing significantly in the NHS to clear the pandemic backlogs. That's why we put the extra money in at the autumn statement with extra £6.6 .6 billion. But in terms of pay, we have uh, a process. Uh, we put an extra 3% into nurses last year when the rest of the public sector had a pay freeze, and we accepted the recommendations in full this year. So we've had a process. And of course, we're three quarters of the way uh, through the year. So if we were changing that, we'd be going all the way back to April and paying retrospectively on that. We've already started the pay process for next year, for next April, uh, and that's where the discussion should be held. And lastly, would you support, there's anti-strike legislation, I understand, being brought forward in the new year. Would you support banning paramedics from taking industrial action of the kind we're witnessing today? 
Well, the government's already made the decision in terms of the rail industry that we will have minimum service level uh, agreements. And we need to look at the arrangements uh, today uh, where national agreements can be agreed, as was the case with the Royal College of Nursing. I think the case uh, is less strong. But if, as we've seen there with the paramedics, uh, there is an issue in terms of not being able to get national agreements, then we will need to look at uh, minimum service levels. So you would support that, just, just to clarify? Well, it will be a cross-government decision, but we need to look at the evidence from what happens today. Grateful for your time today, Health Secretary Steve Barclay, appearing here on LBC. We're at 7.35, a little bit late. Let's catch up on the latest news headlines. Simon Conway. People are being urged to avoid taking risks while ambulance workers in England and Wales go on strike over pay and staffing. The leader of one of the unions involved has told LBC there are safe contingency plans in place so staff can 